Hey guys, welcome back to Periodic Surf Co and welcome back to our SUP build series. So for those that are just coming on now, we have been building this hollow core wooden SUP kit from Periodic Surf Co or DIYSurfboardKits.com and we have made some good progress this far. But in this one, this very video right now, we are gonna get onto installing the hybrid rail, which is one of our systems that we kind of developed to make the whole process just that little bit easier. So on all of our wooden surfboard kits, including the SUP, we have these tabs that stick out from the frame rails. And this is more of a guide and just to allow us to get pretty good alignment for our hollow section of our rails. So in the kits, you have all these 12 by six mil strips. And the idea is, is that we laminate two on to the uh, top and two on to the bottom which matches this profile and thickens up our rails. Now, there is a few things that we do have to do at the nose and the tail sections where it starts to thin out. But for the most part, we just have to clean up all of this squeeze out here so that we have a nice glue surface to apply some clamping pressure. Now, if you're using the complete kit from our website, we supply all of the 12 by six millimeter strips that you need in these shorter lengths. However, for those customers that are opting in to supply their own timber, you'll need to provide a 12 by six or 12 by 12 millimeter strip that can run the whole length on both the top and the bottom. So all up, you will need about 12 meters of material. So from gluing on our deck skin, we just have to remove any of this squeeze out. And the reason for that is that we obviously just need a good glue surface. So I just like to use a small chisel and instead of running it like you would usually with a chisel, I actually just scrape the glue away. Now the next thing is to glue the bottom strips on and that is gonna require a number of clamps. Now we like these kind of spring clamps and these you can just kind of hook over and clamp everything in really easily. A good alternative to spring clamps like this though is homemade clamps made out of PVC. So here you can see that I've got a split in this PVC and I can hook it around and that's actually a really good clamp. To get a little bit of extra clamping for so I tend to double these up so I just put one ring on the outside and that goes from a an okay hold to a really strong hold. Now the glue up process is pretty simple we just basically apply glue to our workpiece so that when we apply our strips everything gets locked in. Now the only thing that we do need to remember is that our nose and tail sections will taper down to a smaller point so if we're putting a 12 by 12 mil strip on the bottom and doing the same on the top, these things are gonna be way too fat. So what we need to do is just taper these bottom pieces, so the two, remember, uh, so that it comes down to a smaller point on this end. So when we lay our top section over, we have a nice tight joint. One other thing you'll notice is that on our tabs here, everything will fit under just fine until we come to the nose section and tail section and that is because of that taper. So now to figure out the length of that taper, I'm just gonna put the workpiece here, wrap it around, and kind of just guesstimate where the taper has to end. So around here. Now to bring in that taper, we just clamp the two pieces together and one way is to use a block plane. So you just start taking lots of passes at the tail. You can see that I've got it clamped to the bench and I'm pushing away from the clamp. That's why we're keeping it upright. And we're doing more passes at the, at the uh, tips and we're slowly progressing further back with every pass. Now that's gonna induce a nice taper and get us to where we need to be. So there's the tapers kind of set. So as we insert it under our rib, we can see that that now has that nice taper and when it comes up to the nose here, we're gonna be able to get a good reference on our top piece. Now here I'm going to be using Type Bond 3 for the glue up, but if you have bought glue specifically for this build, you don't need to use a different glue. You can continue using that polyurethane. The other thing we need to do is put glue between our pieces. So I'm just gonna start by pushing under that rib, getting it nice and tight there. And we can continue to push these around nice and careful. And we can apply clamping pressure while also making sure that we're pressing it down firmly into the deck skin. So we're clamping it to both the skin and the rail. Now at the tail section, we can do two things. We can taper it like we did at the nose. So we would have to taper it all the way from here to the end, or we can actually rotate the pieces, lay them flat, 
and just taper it out by using the timber as a step. So here we would just run it with the one layer. And then from that rib here, we could run it two layers thick. We're still gonna end up with a 12 by 12 millimeter strip at the end of the day. It's just that here, it's a little bit easier than having to taper the entire workpiece. This method, however, doesn't solve the issue of this tab. Now, the reason we have our tabs like they are is because it shows the ideal um, taper for our rail thickness. With this, I would actually be able to taper this one down to nothing and then lay it on top. But instead of doing that, because that's a lot of work, what we can do is just trim this part off. So to trim it, here's a chisel and we're just going to put it down with the bevel facing down so the chip breaks away. And we're just going to line it up on that grain so we're removing a very small amount, maybe half a millimeter. From there, we just lightly push it in and you can see that that chip has gone away. Now, when you're pairing like that, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that not only the bevel facing down, but we're keeping the chisel level with the plane of the work area. So, so with that little bit trimmed, that will now fall under there nice and tight. We can mark our lengths and just glue this in. Only difference is instead of being on edge, it's now flat down. So that is the bottom section installed and the top section goes on basically in the exact same way, except of course, we are not clamping it down that time, we're clamping it in. So same material and same idea. Uh, you can start from the tail, work its way in, and basically it is just we'll repeat it until we have that rail filled out so that we have a nice hollow area. Now the last section to go in is our nose section. So you can see that I have dropped the clamps down around here. So it had about 15 minutes drying already. Uh, so now we're just clamping down and these pieces will form around and just butt up like the rest of it. We don't necessarily have to taper these at this stage. We can do it after the fact. So I'm not gonna do it until we shape the nose down. Uh, it's just that we needed this to have enough of a purchase on this section to be held in place. All right, so that is the hollow portion of the rail attached. Now you of course do that on both sides, but once this is dry, then it comes on to trimming the bottom off and doing the solid portion of the rail. So we will get onto that very shortly. But remember, this may look like a lot of clamps and that's because it is, but I'm doing this all in one go. You can do this in stages. You can do it one section at a time and it only takes half hour to an hour of dry time on a lot of cases until you can move on again. So the next step is to trim off this bottom uh, overhang on the deck here. So if you've got lots of squeeze out, not a bad idea to just scrape some of it off. But in this case, I think we're looking pretty good. So the trimming is done with a router. Now the type of router I use is just a palm router or a trim router with a pattern following bit. So that's a straight cutting bit with a bearing on the top, which is used as your guide. So the idea is we run it along with the bearing hitting this rail filler. So that will flush trim the overhang to our strips. Now routers are a tool that can be very dangerous, but when used correctly, they are pretty damn safe. So of course you never want hands anywhere near the cutter. So our hands are gonna be up on the body of the router. And on top of that, the rotation of the bit should be cutting into the work surface not away. So now the big thing with uh, routers is dust, so make sure you have eye protection and they're noisy, so ear protection as well. All right, so that is our outline trimmed, but now we just need to refine it. So uh, there could be a spot where there was a bit of glue squeezed out so the router didn't reference properly, or maybe one of our rail pieces wasn't perfectly uh, pushed in. So what we'll do is refine it by using a hand plane. So here, hopefully on the camera it shows up, but you can see we got a bit of a lump uh, and a slight wave behind it before it smooths out again. So we can see that that's gonna be our high spot. So with the block plane, we're just gonna take a few passes and even that all out. So and that's basically taking care of that high spot. So we'll do that all the way along until we get everything nice and close and keep working along. So basically it just has to be a nice smooth rail. So 
with all those high spots removed, we can now turn our attention onto getting this edge nice and uh, kind of even with the bottom one. And to do that, we kind of tilt the blade so it's across both the rails on a fairly steep angle and take long continuous shavings. And this should even everything out and ensure that our new rail, which goes on the outside here, so the solid portion, has good glue surface and doesn't end up with any gaps. So that is the profile nice and trimmed. Uh, we can go one further and just make sure that this top edge is bought in. Uh, so it's the same process, of course. We're just running the heel of our plane on the bottom here and running that along this top edge. But generally the top edge is not such an issue because we're clamping it into that rail. But you know, if it looks out, it doesn't hurt to give it a shot. Now the last part of the rail that needs to go on is the solid portion. So here we have the rail strips and these go onto the edge here and just get glued on like so. One thing to remember about the SUP though is we have a solid nose block and a solid tail block. So, so we're going to leave a little bit of material on the front. We don't need much up the front though. And of course this is going to be difficult to bend at this stage but just be gentle with it and things should be fine. And we can see that that will come all the way to the tail section as well. So hopefully you can see that here it comes basically all the way up to the nose with about an inch or two, and then following it around basically to the end of the board as well to where the spine is terminating. So that section is gonna have a solid block. So we've got it very loosely clamped in place here and you can see we've got plenty of overhang on the top and on the bottom. So on the bottom, while you can't see it on camera, we've probably got about an inch. So with a pencil, I can come in and I can run a line along the top and the bottom to show me where the rails can be trimmed to. Now this line, we're still going to allow plenty of material on either side of it, so we'll allow at least a centimetre which is about three eighths of an inch, but it means that we'll have an easier time getting this thing to get clamped on. Now, before we remove any of these clamps as well, we're also just going to mark which rib. So we're going to do an X here, lines up with this portion here. So basically we know these two ribs here have to line up with these two pencil marks for this to be just in the correct position. So everything's marked out. Now it's just a matter of cutting this out. So I'm gonna clamp these two boards together at the same time and cut this out in one. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do it is using my bandsaw because I have it, but you've seen me use the jigsaw previously uh, and that is the other really good option for this. All right, so that is the profile cut out. And now we just have to line up our X, which is here. We can clamp it in place temporarily. And this is just to confirm that we have everything cut okay and we didn't stuff anything up basically, so. Now at this nose section, on this board it's probably doable without steaming it because it will conform. But to make our life easier, we are gonna steam about this much, so about uh, ruler's length, so 12 inches or 300 mil uh, of the two pieces. And that will just let this part conform nicer to this curve. Remember this section at the nose where we're not meeting, this gets cut off and we put a solid block in there. Same with the tail. Okay, so with this now nice and steamed, we are going to unwrap it and then working quickly, I'm going to apply glue to the outside face. Stack those pieces on and we get it clamped into position, so. I'm going to work towards the nose first because we've got the heat in the uh, steamed section, so we don't want to lose that. So there's our nose section clamped on. And we can just work our way gently, methodically, all the way along, making sure that everything is getting glued on and has good contact. So we've jumped forward to the next day and that side is all dry. So we can move on and do the same thing on this side. However, I will just show you a few alternatives here um, where you don't need quite as many clamps. Now all of this central section, which is actually quite flat and straight, 
doesn't actually require clamping pressure, so to speak. It just needs something to hold it into place. So if you haven't got heaps of these clamps, what you can use is things like pallet wrap, which is just that stretch film that shrinks and wrap that around the board in this big area here. So essentially, uh, this is going to act as a clamping. You can get this in any packing area and that will do a good job. Now it's just a matter of clamping these tighter curves in and uh, letting it dry. All right, so there you can see that instead of needing all of those clamps, we've just used some stretch film, wrapped it around, and now that is acting as the clamp for the majority of this build. Uh, of course, the more layers you do and the more stretch you give it, the stronger this is going to be. But when you're working alone on a wide board like this, it's pretty difficult to get that stretch. So um, definitely something to do with two people. So from here, we let this dry, of course, and we trim off all of this excess. And then we get on to the fun bits of installing hardware support material. So that's the support material for your fin boxes, vent plug, leash plug, etc., uh, as well as adding the solid blocks at the nose and tails. But then it's the top deck and shaping. So we're really close to having this thing finished, even if it may look like it's a long way off. So we're gonna leave it here, but if you've liked this video, click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and check the notifications icon so you stay up to date with all of our future wooden surfboard and stand-up paddleboard related videos with tips, tricks, builds, and all sorts of fun stuff. So that's it for this video. We'll see you next time.